or sorry for the little delay. So as far as the agenda is concerned, I'll give a brief background about um, how we came out this framework proposal and uh, talk about, and then Banu will talk about how the framework looks in implementation and how it works in practicality, and then we'll end with a call to action. All right, so as we talked about in the, in the previous session during the updates, we started with like three workload categories and three very specific use cases last year, focusing on virtualization, um, containerization, AI, and then caching. This year we decided to cast a wider net and include more categories of workloads, and within those also focus on other specific workloads such as Cassandra, Spark, Redis, which we'll hear, hear about during the rest of the sessions. And what that meant was we need to now also, if you go to the next slide, figure out what sort of CMS solution actually works for that specific use case. Oh, sorry, it's going this way. Because um, it's important to identify like one CMS solution or just connecting a CXL device is not enough. It's not like one solution will work for all the workloads. So we wanted to make sure that we come up with some way of identifying the right CMS solution for the right use case and more importantly, the right value. Because at the end of the day, we are here not just for fun and just doing a science project. We actually want production deployments. We want to see the ROI and the TCO benefit for whatever CMS solution goes into production. So with that intent, we started looking at, okay, how do we solve this problem? We have a wide variety of workloads. The, the resource requirements for each of these workloads is very different. But if we came up with a checklist of questions that are most commonly asked when we come up with a solution design, it starts with, like, I won't go through the entire list, but from the very basic, like, will it even work on CXL attached devices? To the more complex, like, okay, I have my workload working on a CXL device. Now, what sort of tiering do I need? Or what sort of ratios of CXL DRAM do I need? And so if you create a word cloud out of all these questions, it boils down to three main things, performance, latency, and bandwidth. And that's not surprising if you look at memory, those performance, latency, and bandwidth are the key performance attributes. And with that, we decided to anchor our framework, um, if you go to the next slide, along those two dimensions. So you just look at this particular chart and you start looking at your workload requirements. You start profiling your workload, which I'm assuming is on DRAM and you're looking to migrate that on a CXL attached device or combination of both. This sort of latency bandwidth decomposition of your workload uh, by quantifying using benchmarking and profiling, you can figure out where your workload lands in this particular latency bandwidth chart. And based on that, your workload could end up being extremely memory bound and extremely latency sensitive or it could be memory bound and more bandwidth sensitive, or it could be neither. And that means you're basically running in a core bound workload, which also has its own use case for a CMS solution. So once you have your workload decomposed and analyzed and profiled on the memory requirements in terms of latency and bandwidth, the next step is to now figure out what sort of CMS solution really would work or will provide a value. If you're looking at optimizing for say dollar per gigabyte or dollar per perf or whatever your success criteria is. And just at a high level, uh, if your workload is memory bound, you may want to start looking at a CMS native expansion device because pooling by design will incur a higher latency. So uh, you might not want to start with a CMS pooling solution. Not that it's uh, precluded, but just to give our users some guidelines on how to go about CMS solution design, you may want to start with a native expansion for a memory bound workload. Now, if you just turn uh, back to the slide. So the end goal is to sort of marry your workload memory requirements for in terms of latency and bandwidth to the attributes that the CMS solution provides and then come up with the right design points and sort of the right size the solution so that you get the ROI benefit that you're looking for for the CMS solution. So with that, I will hand it off to Banu who will actually go over some examples of how this looks in practice. Okay, uh, morning folks. So I'm going to talk a little more about uh, the nitty gritty of uh, getting things done. Okay. So basically what we're looking at is if we are all trying to compare solutions, that is uh, you versus me, me versus him, him versus her. Okay. So we all got to talk the same language. If we don't talk the same language, we are in trouble and then we'll keep talking past each other. And the goal at CMS is essentially to expand this, to expand our scope, not to limit the scope. So, next slide. So, uh, one of the things that we could look at over here is uh, okay. So one so so one such reference uh, framework could well be something like this, right? We use a single socket system. We essentially have attached uh, CXL, 
uh, and then we have uh, DRAM, and we have a whole bunch of things. So this allows us to uh, assign workloads easily to, to the CXL attached memory on uh, one socket or two sockets or three sockets, in this case, uh, just a single socket. And uh, we could reduce any kind of uh, variability that will arise when we, uh, when we make the system more complex. So this is one such reference framework we could look at. So, okay. So uh, over here, for instance, uh, we could, uh, uh, for instance, say, hey, you know what? I want to just look at CXL attached memory, look at uh, DRAM, have two comparisons, one that says, how does this run on pure CXL? One does, how does that run on pure DRAM, okay? So, uh, what we have, there are lots of uh, GitHub recipes out there, and what we have tried to do in this particular uh, thing that we, that me Memo is contributing, we are calling CXL Bench, which is a set of, uh, a, a set of application focused uh, uh, applications, and we are trying to get this, uh, I mean, hopefully we can get people to expand this, and uh, here we can look, talk exactly the same language, okay? so. Again, over here, we can talk about what's happening on the device versus what's happening on, the f on an application. Next slide. Okay. So the, uh, the next uh, thing that we also got to look at is we have to really talk the same metrics. If you're talking different metrics, you know, again, we're talking past each other, and again, we want to standardize. Talk the same metrics, get something going. So say, for instance, at the operating system level, you can talk about DSTAT, you can talk about SAR, you can talk about IOSTAT. Those are, uh, those are common uh, uh, metric frameworks for, uh, at the operating system level. At the device level, for instance, we, we have a whole bunch of other tools from different vendors. Uh, you have Perf from the Linux community. You have Intel VTune. You have uh, uh, AMD's UProf. You have you have Intel PCM and so on. All of this gives us visibility of the entire system. Now, all of the, the whole point of getting the right metrics is to make sure that A, we select the right solution, and B, we have to right size the solution. So what I'm going to do uh, going forward is I'm going to take a couple of small examples, one that looks at the device and one that looks at uh, an application, okay? So, uh, so the first uh, piece is, of course, I'll talk about uh, Intel MLC, that's the memory latency checker. Uh, I mean, now, considering where it started from, I can say MLC has really built up and uh, has become the, uh, the go-to tool as far as uh, understanding the devices to get the fundamental understanding of both bandwidth and uh, latency. So again, over here, what we're talking about is we are talking about uh, just running MLC. We have an expander. We have a, uh, and then we have the, uh, of course, uh, DRAM. Now, what MLC allows us to do is simply look at this in terms of what's happening as far as the device is concerned. So the, the two uh, uh, parameters we go off against, latency and memory. Next slide. So basically, this is how we did a setup. We said, okay, single socket system. We'll run, uh, we'll run MLC on the uh, socket, and then we'll go to DRAM, we'll go to uh, CXL, and also uh, MLC gives us a way of interleaving the two, so we look at some results uh, from the two. Okay. So, so we scaled, uh, we scaled MLC by slowly increasing the work, increasing the load on, uh, on the system, starting from a few uh, cores, ramping it all the way to the top. Uh, and at each point, we measure the bandwidth, we measure the latency. And now basically, we've plotted it. So, now you, as, we, uh, as we plot the curve, fundamentally, you can see how CXL has a, has a decent enough bandwidth uh, to start with, with a low enough uh, latency, and then suddenly it hits a knee, and then latency just goes through the roof. And as latency goes through the roof, there's a, f there's a corresponding fall in bandwidth. Now, there's another line, the yellow line over there is what only DRAM gives us, okay? 
So DRAM gives us a certain amount of bandwidth, decent amount, uh, low enough latency as we increase the load. Now, the interesting thing is on this particular system, what happens if you have a 90-10 mix of interleaving? So 90% of traffic goes to DRAM, 10% goes to CXL. Now suddenly we see a nice bump in the bandwidth. Latency is comparable okay, to, to DRAM. You can see the bad effects of CXL latency is really uh, reduced to the point of being nothing. Okay? So this is one way of looking at uh, looking at the system and saying this is how the device and this is how the system gives us certain uh, uh, device, the characteristics that we can use going forward. Now, with any, with any new attached uh, device, the, this characteristic will change. So it'll, this system will allow us to say, hey, what, am I, what is my targeted goal? Where do I need to go? And uh, so on. Next slide. So, now, again, over here, if you look at this uh, as a bandwidth curve, okay, so we just plotted the latency uh, uh, bandwidth uh, curve that we had, uh, that uh, Vikrant had shown earlier. You can see 100% uh, CXL has high latency, and 100% uh, uh, and DRAM has a certain uh, uh, bandwidth, and then you follow that up with saying, hey, and if you go all the way across, this is where we get in terms of the, uh, uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, interleaving. Now, the other application we look at is uh, look at TPCC scaling. Okay, so we are trying to keep things equivalent. Now, again, this thing that we have contributed into the CXL bench, you can change the parameters as you want, and uh, you can go forward. In this particular case, keeping things equivalent, making sure everything fits inside uh, CXL, and then we are simply doing a comparison between the two. Next slide. So this is how the setup is done. So it's a two socket system. One socket has the CS CXL expander and uh, that's where the uh, database server runs. And then you have the load driver on the second uh, 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 socket that's uh, driving the load to the, uh, to the database. In this case, what I'm showing you is just a very, very simple uh, comparison between what happens between DRAM and CXL. Now, again, please note that this is one experiment with one particular uh, set of characteristics and one particular set of uh, parameters. Uh, in this particular case, what we see is that uh, we are using pure CXL. We are getting approximately 80% the performance of, out of as opposed to the DRAM. However, our uh, uh, latency has also increased by 20%. So again, so depending on where you're uh, trying, to, uh, trying to attack the solution, you either put say, hey, you know, I can use a lot of uh, CXL or I can use a lot of DRAM or I preclude one or the other and then uh, uh, set my design point. Next slide. So now, now while we're doing this at one of these performance points, we decide, okay, let's see what's happening on the system, okay? now. So this is approximately a case, this is a case where we are looking at uh, the application metrics. The first two says these are the application metrics. And then the last four actually gives us uh, the system metrics out of perf spec. Uh, please note on this particular system, there is no CXL specific data available. Hopefully this uh, resolves itself as uh, we move to uh, Granite Rapids and uh, Turin uh, systems where I do know Granite Rapids opens this up and I hope Turin does too. So again, this is a way of looking at it, talking the same language, and making sure that, uh, that we get there. Next slide. Okay. So basically a call to action. So over the past uh, couple of days, what I've seen is a lot of people have said, I have run workload X, I have run workload Y, I have run workload Z, and this is what the result I'm getting and uh, this is how things are moving forward. Yes, I understand a lot of these are in uh, the, uh, uh, there's lots of GitHub recipes. However, there is no single way of putting everything together. Everybody runs across a similar kind of, uh, 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 similar kinds of difficulties or ease of bringing things up. Let's all 
let's all collaborate, bring this up so that everybody has an easy way of comparing workloads, running workloads, and, uh, uh, and, and moving forward. Basically, it's a collaborative effort. Let's make sure that we all collaborate and get things moving forward. The next uh, thing that we want to do is please contribute, okay? So uh, we at Memwords, we started by saying, let's create a simple thing called CXL Veg. We've contributed uh, multiple recipes to multiple workloads over there. Uh, as we start bringing up more and more recipes, we'll keep contributing more and more over there. Hopefully, if not CXL Bench, maybe there's something that uh, you bring up and say, hey, this is my way of doing CXL bench Benchmarks. It's there. We can modify it. We can do whatever it is that we need to do. The last thing that I want to ask is that, you know, we need out-of-the-box telemetry for all of these devices from both the CXL and uh, CPU vendors. So like I said, hopefully Intel uh, and uh, AMD have solved the problem with Granite Rapids and uh, Turin. That gives us visibility into understanding the latency and uh, bandwidth characteristics out of CXL. However, I also want to talk to people who are uh, creating the CXL direct attach uh, memory, the switches, the pool memory, the fabrics is there should be a way for us to grab any kind of important metrics that's coming out of your system. And with that, uh, I really will say uh, thank you very much. And hopefully, we will see a lot more of you in the workloads group. And hopefully, we see a lot more uh, 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 contributions into a way of uh, moving CXL forward. Thank you.